Abraão. Le casa baraba. Mako to bose kelebre de beka santa ba. Manta kabara baba soto bokoro bosi ebre de beka santa ba. Le kobo santa ba. Geba raba ba santa ba. Mako so poto bodi ba. Le kobo soto bo riba ba santa ba. Le kobo soto bo kila ba ba. Ma koto bo se kerebe santa ba. Ma. Thank you Jesus. Ma koro bo se kerebe de beka santa bo riba ba santa ba. Koro bo di lebe de beka santa ba ba. Ye mama santa mako tobo senke le brede be kasanta ba mako so tobo korobo di le brede be kasanta ba mako so tobo di ba mako so tobo mako tobo senke le brede be kasanta ba manta kapara ba so tobo di brede be kasanta ba Meko soto bo riba ba santa baba. Meko soto bo di ebrede be ka santa baba. Mako soto bo di lebrede be ka santa baba. Meko soto bo di lebrede be ka santa baba. Mako to bo se ke lebrede be ka santa baba. Hallelujah to your name. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Le Baba Baba Santa Baba Korobosi Kelebe Santa Baba Korobosi Le Brede Beka Santa Baba. Le Koto Bosi Kelebe Brede Beka Santa Baba Korobosi Le Brede Beka Santa Baba. Manta Kapara Baba Soto Bosi Le Brede Beka Santa Baba. Maroba Soko Bosi Le Brede Beka Santa Baba. Ma ko soto bo si le brede be ka santa baba. E ka la baba santa baba koro bo si le brede se bere be ka santa baba. E ka la baba sarabai. Me ko soto bo si le brede be ka santa. Mo ko so bo di e ba sa baba. Ma ko to bo se ke le brede be ka santa baba. Ma ke le brede be ka santa baba koro bo di le brede be ka santa baba. Ye bala baba santo bori baba santa ba. Hallelujah to your name. Blessed be your name. Le kobo siya ba. Ma koto bo se kere be siye brede be ka santa ba. Ma soto bo si le brede be ka santa baba. Manta ka para baba sokro bo si baba. Aka la baba sokolo brede be ka santa baba. Koro bo di le brede be ka santa baba. Come on open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. The Bible says we know not how to pray. The way we ought to pray. But that the spirit of God himself helps our infirmities. And make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. And that he that such at the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. For the spirit make it intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Come on, open your mouth. Ma se telebre, beko soto bodile bebe. Ma santa barababa sokoro bodile brede beka santa baba. Landa ba korobo sende be kere be sanda ba korobo sende be be sanda ba ba. Manda ba ba sonda ba korobo di e brede be kasanda ba ba. Manda ba ba sonda ba kule brede be kasanda ba korobo di le brede be kasanda ba ba. Libra la ba ba sonto, libra la ba ba santa. Abrono mo kosi ya ba ba, ma abrono mo kosonto. Ye brene me kasanta, ye brene me kasanta. 
Manta kapara baba soto bakule brede bega santa bakolo bobo brodo bago dule brede bega santa baba mila baba me soto bobo bodile brede bega santa ba hallelujah to your name blessed be your name O God masale bro rebebe santa zente lembre lembron dobo sata shende lembron dobo kosata shala baba santa baba shata ye koto bosia come on bless him thank you thank you. Hallelujah. Meso so bobo ye. Ye ye bebe santa. Lende bobo sinta. Li baba santa ba korobo di lebre de beka santa. Ah bara baba santa ba. Thank you Jesus. Me koto bo se ke lebre de beka santa baba. Ma koto bo se ke lebre de beka santa ba. Ma soto bo lo bo koto bre de beka santa baba. Men te lebre. I kabrana mama santa bo. Le kodo bo si te di baba santa ba koro bo di ebre de santa ba. Mas kelebre mes re kelebe zanta la baba man kolo bro sente lebre. Ba sa te lebro me kelebre de bege zunte li baba. Hallelujah to your name. Blessed be your name Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you. We give you praise and glory. Mas soto bo di ebre de santa. Le kobo santo bo riba ba santa ba korobo di lebre de beka santa baba. Ma koto bo se ke lebre. Ma soto bo zi ke rebebe. Come on now. Ma se te lebre. I la baba santa ba korobo di lebre de beka santa baba. Sembre de ge du la baba santa ba. Ma so kolo bro do bogo du lebre de beka santa ba kule bre de beka santa baba. Ma koto bo se ke lebre de beka santa baba. Ye kolo bo santa ba kule bre de beka santa ba ba. Jen de lebre i ba la ba ba. Ma soto bo lo bre de be. Se ki le ba ba santa ba kolo bo du le bre de beka santa ba ba. En de lebre ma so kolo bo do bo du le bre de beka santa ba. Hallelujah. Ma ko soto bo du le bre de beka santa ba. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Ma ko so bo di ba. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Marco Soborobodi Ebre de Beka Santaba. I say of the Lord, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God in you I trust. Marke Lebre de Beka Santaba. Surely you have delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Marco Sotobodi Ebre de Beka Santaba. Surely you have delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the destruction, the noisome pestilence. Marco soto wa kule brede beka santa da baba orobo kotu le brede beka santa baba ye ken de brede beka soto wa kule brede beka sa Marco soto wa kotu baba you have covered me Marco soto wa kotu se bebe Marco soto wa di brede beka santa baba you have covered me under your feathers ah karababasia you have covered us under your feathers you have covered us under your feathers. You have covered us with your feathers. You have covered us with your feathers. And under your wings, under your wings, Bose Brede Beka Santa Baba. Marco Socorro de Beka Santa Baba. Santa Baba. Nese Telebre, Mesu Pari, Ala Brodo Boko Santa Baba. Je Kelebre de Beka Santa Baba. Ma Soto Boko de Bebe. Marco Socorro de Brede Beka Santa Baba. You have covered us, O oh God, with your feathers and under your wings. Oh, do we find refuge? Marco Sebe, your truth has become our shield and our buckler. We are not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by the day. For the pestilence that walketh, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Not for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Marco Soto, Le Kelebe. A thousand has fallen at our right hand. And ten thousand at our left hand. Marco at our right hand. A thousand has fallen at our side. And ten thousand at our right hand. But they shall not come near us, O God. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Marco Soto, Bodile Brebeca Sandaba. Because thou, O God, Abrodoboko Siebre de Beka Saraba. Because we have made Jehovah our refuge, the most high, our habitation, the most high, our dwelling place. There shall no evil befall us, 
Neither shall any plague come near our dwelling, our dwelling. Marco Robo Sekerebebe. For he, Barababasia, for he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. Marco Robo Sekerebebe Kassandaba. You didn't hear me. I say he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. Marco Robo Sekerebebe Kassandaba. Lest we dash our foot against a stone. Marco Sorobo Sekerebebe Kassandaba. We shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall we trample under our feet in the name of Jesus. Marcos Okorobo de Ebredebe. Marcos Okorobo de Bo, Yebrebe. Marcos Okorobo de Ebredebe Cassandaba. Because you, O Lord, have set your love upon us, therefore you have delivered us and set us on high, because we have known your name. Masotobo Kulebredebe Cassandaba. Ekelebebe, Ekelebe Siebrava Kassanaba, Akaraba Sieba. We shall call upon you and you will answer. Akorobo Siebebe, Ale Brodobo Kobo Siebrebe Kassaba, and you will deliver us in time of trouble and you will honor us, O God. Marcus, with long love, you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. O Rababa Santaba, Korobo Sekelebrebe Kassanaba, Ekalababa Santaba. Malobo ko se kelebre de beka santa baba. Men telebre rebebe se kelebre de beka santa baba. Kolobo du lebre de beka santa baba. Manta kapa rebebe de beka santa. Je kelebre, je kelebre, je kelebre. Me du se li baba, me du se li baba, me du se li baba. Man de lebro robo se kelebre de beka santa baba. Me ke te bre de beka santa baba ku lebre de beka santa. Marco Tobo se celebre de beca santa bacolo brodo boco sunt elibaba santa. Je celebre in the name of Jesus. Ma celebro si lebre de beca santa ba. Marco Tobo se celebre de beca santa bacule bre de beca santa baba. Men celebre basso tobo cule bre. Ezia ba. Ma due bre de beca santa baba. Ma lobo bo santa bacule bre de beca santa bacolo brodo boco sunt elibre. Mezuta libaba. Baboro boco sompre. Le branda ma sompre, le branda ma sompre, me sopra no ma sompre. I prana ma cosoto bodu le brede bega zantaba. Le dila bra ma sobria, brede gezeze dia. Le koto zo brana, me soto i dapaya secrementa. Man de le brende kula baba santa. In the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, we thank you this evening. We bless you this evening. Thank you because it is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Because your compassion, they feel it not. This evening, O oh God, we come before your presence, O oh God. You say, well, let us come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We've come this morning, O God. We've come this evening, O God, just as we are, Lord. Speak to us, O God. Revive us, O God. Revitalize us, O God. Lord God, a house, a time of commitment unto you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys can't even wait for us to start. You already put the time on. Can you restart that time, please? Amen. This is prayer. Amen. Praise God. Yes, restart the time. Amen. We're going to try to finish before time, but just restart it. 45 minutes on the clock. Thank you, sir. Amen. Your amen is looking for somewhere to land. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You have to Say amen with authority. Say amen with confidence and with boldness. Because you understand that your amens are important. Because when you say amen, you're saying so be it. It's an agreement. Amen. You agree with what God is saying. Amen. He says, can two work together except they be in agreement. Praise God. How many of us was blessed on Sunday? Blessed on Sunday, blessed on Sunday. I hope you came with questions or 
You want to share with us the things that uh, spoke to your heart? I just want to, there was something I was emphasizing very, very strongly um, on Sunday. I don't know if you, if you got it. And I kept saying it over and over again. I said that you will know, that you will know. When you know your identity, you can flow in your authority. Amen. But I emphasize the word knowledge. Proverbs even tells us that by his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the heavens drop down their dew. And I shared with us that the depths that we're referring to is not necessarily the depths in the earth, but is the depth in you, in you, in you, that God has buried treasures in you and that it takes your knowledge of God to break up this depth so that you can access the treasure that you contain on the inside. You must understand that you are not here by accident. You are born full, but you must die empty. Heaven does not need the treasures you have. Amen. Heaven does not need the treasures that you carry. The earth needs them. So you need the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. By his knowledge. He didn't say by knowledge. Specific. By his knowledge. The depths are broken up. By his knowledge. The depths are broken up. Now you must understand that there's a difference between knowledge and information. Information is not knowledge. Information is the accumulation of facts. Amen. Facts are subject to change. But we're talking about the knowledge of God that does not change. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. That when you know, you will flow. That when you know, you will flow. That if you must flow, you must know. If you must flow, you must know. The Bible says that there were two disciples that left Jerusalem and went down to a city called Emmaus. They went down. They left Jerusalem, which was top, and they went down. Every time you leave your set place, you go down. Every time you leave the place that God set for you, you go down. That's why it's good to remain in your set place. Amen. When you remain there, challenges will come. But God has already equipped you with the grace that you need to be able to tackle the challenges that you face. Somebody say amen. So I say that it is important for us to understand that you know, that you know, that you know. So the disciples were on their way to Emmaus as they were going. The Bible says Jesus appeared with them. He appeared with them not just to talk with them. He appeared with them to walk with them. To walk with them. God said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Can I bless you this evening? Are you sure about that? Can I really bless you this evening? Can I say something that will shock you this evening? Now understand. The knowledge of God does not come by the uh, it does not come by the study of scriptures. <laughs> I'm here to <laughs> somebody scatter your theology. You're looking at me like <laughs> okay. That's all I know. The knowledge of God. When you study scriptures, you get to no no no. The knowledge of God does not come by the study of scriptures. Information about God comes by the study of scripture. The knowledge of God is a product of obedience. The knowledge of God comes by your walk of obedience. You don't get to know God because you read the scriptures. You get to know God because you walk with him. 
<laughs> I don't think you all are ready for me this evening. Because you are looking at me cockeyed. I don't think you're really ready for me. Are you sure you're ready? What did I say? The knowledge of God does not come by the study of scriptures. There are folks who can quote the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, but they don't know God. The knowledge of God comes from your walk of obedience with him. In other words, how well you walk with him. Notice when God appeared to Abraham and said, walk before me and be thou perfect. This was Genesis 17. For 13 years, God did not say a word to Abraham. Let me make, I should, maybe I should leave that for another message. <laughs> for 13 years, God did not say a word to Abraham because Ishmael was born and Ishmael was a product of the flesh and Abraham had not repented. In fact, Abraham was really rejoicing in Ishmael thinking that Ishmael was going to be the one that was going to really, really. So for 13 years, God didn't say a word to Abraham. Why? Because something was wrong with his walk. So when God comes to Abraham, the first thing he said, walk before me and be perfect. You understand that everything that threatens your walk with God threatens your future. It is your walk with God. That is the thing. Because that's where you learn obedience. He says that he himself learned obedience through the things he suffered. Walking with God. Walking with God. Notice obedience. He learned obedience through the things he suffered. Obedience is not something you learn in the school. Obedience is not something you learn by reading books. Obedience is something you learn by doing the instructions of God. So obedience does not come by the reading of scriptures, by the studying of scriptures. You know what comes by the studying of scripture? Information. Knowledge, the real knowledge of God. That knowledge that will break up the depths and give you access to your resources and give you access to the treasure that you carry. That knowledge does not come because you read the scriptures. That knowledge comes because you obey him. Because every time you obey God, there's a deposit of knowledge in you. It's like it is in obedience that you are pregnated with God. Obedience does something. It pregnates you. It impregnates you with the seed of God. It is in the place of obedience that God impregnates you. It is in the place of obedience that God impregnates you. I said before that safety is not the absence of danger. It is the presence of God. The safest and the prosperous place you can ever be in your life is in the place of obedience. For in the place of obedience, nothing can touch you. No, that is when no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You come under the canopy of God. You come under the umbrella of God. In the place of obedience, every incantation will fall flat. In the place of obedience, nothing the enemy can do can touch you. Why? Because you are in the shadow of God Almighty. He will protect you. He will keep you. He will bless you. It's in the place of obedience. Anything you touch will turn to gold. The place of obedience. That's where you know God. That's where you know God. You want to know him? Obey him. You want to know him? Obey him. You want to know him? Obey him. Obedience. Obedience. It is better than sacrifice. Obedience. 
Just do what he says. Obedience expresses your faith. Obedience expresses your love and your desire for God. Obedience expresses your commitment to God. The next time I'm going to preach here, I'm going to share with you, God willing, the committed life. The committed life. The life that is committed to God. You will understand that in the life of Abraham, Abraham built three altars in his journey. From the time he left Earl of the Chaldeans till the time he died, he built three altars. And I will show you the significance of those three altars. Why those three altars are very important. And I will tell you the significance of an altar. For God has no need, no use for a land if there's no altar on it. You didn't hear me. Did you hear me? God has no use for a land if there's no altar on it. That's why when Abraham got the land, when Abraham got the land, he built an altar. Notice the altar is built, but his tent was pitched. He built an altar there, and there he gave burnt offerings to the Lord. So if we really, really want to know God, you will stay humble. But you see, humility is not something you do. Humility is something you be. So there are people that try to stay humble with their own strength. You don't become humble by your power. You become humble. Humility is a virtue. It's a character that is displayed and portrayed by Jesus. And when you have Jesus in you, you will display humility. So when you see a man that is proud, or you see somebody that is proud, full of themselves, it's just telling you that they really don't know God. I tell you, a proud man don't know God. Because there is no way you can know God. There's no way you can have an encounter with God and be proud. It's impossible. It's impossible. Listen, let me tell you something. Even if you are in a situation where your boss is telling you something that you know, and you know you know it. And you probably even know better than your boss. Sh shut up your mouth. Do like you don't know anything. Hello, somebody. You know, folks, sometimes folks like to make their boss look bad. So they can score points. Hello. Am I talking? Are you hearing? So... It's called the fruit of the Spirit. You notice they say the fruit of the Spirit and then the works of the flesh. One is produced by reason of effort. The other one is produced by reason of fellowship. Intimacy. Fruit, don't pro fruit, fruit is not produced by reason of effort. It is union that produces fruit. Did you hear me? It is union that produces fruit. It is effort that produces works. The works of the flesh. So when it comes to the flesh, we are walking. When it comes to the spirit, it's a union. That's why it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice grace is associated to Jesus. The love of God. Love is associated to God the Father. Why? Because that is the originator of everything. The reason why Jesus came to express grace is because God loves you. The grace that Jesus expressed was surely an expression of the love of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means you cannot get grace without Jesus. The love of God. That means love emanates from him. God is love. The Father is love. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You cannot talk about love without knowing the Father. 
when you know the Father, you know love. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And fellowship is associated with the Spirit of God. Because it's the one that comes in our fellowship and begins to reveal Jesus to us. He's the one that comes into our fellowship and make our fellowship sweet and nice. Somebody say amen. So if we really truly want to be the people that God wants us to be, we cannot play with fellowship. We cannot play with union. 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 Because that's where, that's where, that's where the fruit, we bear the fruit. So humility is not something you do. I'm going to try to do, you. no, 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 no. Integrity is not something you do. Integrity is something you are by virtue of your union with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Am I talking to somebody? So when I say no, no, knowledge, knowledge, when I talk about knowledge, I'm talking about the knowledge that comes by experience. That's why I said that you don't know God because you read scriptures. The knowledge of God does not come by the study of scriptures. I think that is so powerful and so potent. The knowledge of God does not come by the study of scriptures. The knowledge of God comes by your work of obedience. That's why God appeared to Abraham. Walk before me because something was wrong with his walk. Something was wrong with his W-A-L-K. Not W-O-R-K. W-O-R-K entails effort. W-A-L-K entails union, fellowship, communion, talking with him, being in his presence. So, so it, if you want to be pregnated by God, you are pregnated by God in the place of obedience. I was talking to my friend, the pastor of House on the Rock um, in Abuja. House on the Rock in Abuja. Built the whole church. Built the church. It's been there 17 years. Built it from the ground up. And God says, now, resign. Surrender everything. And come. And has not told him what he would do. You want to walk with God? At least if God had told him what he would do, that would be incentive for him to abandon what he has built. I need to take you to Abuja to go and see what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a church of three to 4,000 people. They just, they just finished their building. Are you listening to me? You see, you are not ready to you're not ready to know him. To know God will cost you something. It will cost you something. This man had finished building everything. A church of three to four thousand people. And God says, resign, step down, and go sit down in your house. I'll tell you what to do. And has not told him what to do yet. And the man resigned and left everything, gave them the keys, didn't take one thing, just left it. And I just talked to him this evening. I said, I admire you. I admire your courage to obey God. It takes courage to obey. It takes courage to obey. And it is in that place of obedience you know God. You don't know God when you open, when you read through the pages of scriptures. No, you don't. Because this is just the written word, not the living word. It is in the place of obedience, the scriptures you have read becomes the scriptures you live. That is when the written word becomes the living word. He says you are written episode, written and read by all. That is when people will look at your life and look at how you obey God and then you are preaching the gospel without saying a word. Am I talking this evening? Is somebody hearing this evening? It is in that place of obedience that is when God is revealed. 
So we want to obey. Whatever he said, look at what Mary said to them. Whatever he said to do, do it. Notice what I said. That God did not tell him what he was going to do. God just told him resign. So that the only incentive he has is the incentive that I am doing this because God said it. That's all. Every time you need additional incentive to obey, you are not mature. You don't know him. Every time in your life when you need additional incentive to obey God, it's evidence you don't know him. It's, it's evidence you don't have the knowledge of God. Because if you have the knowledge of God, all you need to know is to know that God said it. That is the only incentive you need to obey. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he say, he will do. But when you don't know him, then you start looking for all kinds of incentives. Hello? Did you get something? Questions, answers, contributions. What did you learn? Come on now. What did you learn from the message on Sunday? Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. The one I just said, that's all right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not Sunday. The one I just said, that's the same part of it. The one you just laid on us now. Amen. <laughs> you have to know what to obey. That's you have it. to read to know what to obey. Mm -hmm. So studying the scripture is good. I'm not knocking studying the scripture. But that's not, that's not where you know God. But, Go ahead. In the, you have to know how to work, how to behave, how to be obedient mm -hmm. to what he said. You have to study the scripture. To, to st good. That is good. Nobody's knocking that. How many of you know the scriptures? How many of you have obeyed the scriptures? You see where I'm coming from now? So I'm not, not, you still read your Bible. You still study, you still pray, you still do all those stuff. But when the rubber hits the road, okay, when the rubber hits the road, you will know God in the place, because all the scripture you read and you study, if you don't come to a place of obedience, it's nothing. It's nothing. You are no better than somebody who, who, who never read the scripture. So, what's the point in reading it if you don't do it? That's why the Bible says, it is the doers of the word that are justified. You see where, where I'm coming from now? So, 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 it's good to read the Bible. I read the Bible. Amen. But you come to a place. Have you ever come to a place? Stand there. No, don't finish. I I, you see, I have one question. Okay. Have you ever come to one place in your life where you, what you're doing is wrong? You know that what you're doing is wrong. Maybe Julie hasn't come there. Julie is very advanced in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> but, but hear me. You know that what you're doing is wrong. Okay? But you cannot help it. You keep falling into it. Until you come to a place where you come in contact with God. And you understand that the very fact that God said this is wrong is enough incentive for you to stop doing it. So you stop doing it not because the sin is taken away from you or the opportunity to do that is taken away. But that you know and you know that doing this is wrong. It's just like, take for example, uh, um, Saul. Or like you are married to a woman or a man. And you know. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. You say that anyway. I mean, you 
think you are obeying God. Uh huh. Go At ahead. the end of it all, uh -huh. you know that God didn't ask you to be there. You were staying there for all kinds of reasons. What will people say? What will people do? You know, all kinds of stuff. But that is such a personal thing. You yourself know within your heart of heart what you should do. Let me give you an example. Saul. When God came to Saul through the prophet um, Samuel, what did Samuel say to Saul? God said, go and destroy the Amalekites. Go fight war with the Amalekites. Destroy all the Philistines, sorry. Not Amalekites, Philistines, thank you. Destroy all of them. Don't save anybody. From the king to the everything. That was the instruction from God. He knew this instruction. What did he do? He went. Go ahead. He did not obey God. So here's what I'm saying. See, what he says to you is different from what he says to somebody else. Okay? Now, there's obedience that has to do with the scriptures. God says, tied, you tied. Yeah, I understand all that, all that. But there are personal things, personal, personal things that, that God is telling you, this is the way I want you to go. But where he's telling you to go, it doesn't look rosy. This is the way you want to go because it looks rosy. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Right there, Pastor. How mm. do you know you are here? Because sometimes, if God say, move out of your house, like mm. me now, I have to, I will come to you, I think I'm not hearing from you. You know, it's not God. God will not tell me to do that. Mm -hmm. Because he gave me the house. How do I know it's God? Okay. That is very good question. Let me, can I answer it to, with a very simple distance? Listen, if I call you right now, if you are in your house, and I call you, and you pick up the phone, I didn't say my name, I didn't say anything, I just spoke. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Is everything all right with you? Would you not know that it's your pastor? Yes. Why? Because I know you have been in I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> There's no birth in it. Jesus said, I know my sheep, and my sheep, they know my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Here's the point. That as you spend, now you have to develop knowing the voice of God. As you spend time with him in fellowship, as you read the scriptures, you will see how he deals with other people. You will see how he talks to other people. And so you begin to pick his voice. You begin to know how God speaks. And then you know his scriptures. You know his word. Take for example now, if you hear a voice that says, Julie, get up, go there, buy a gun, take the gun, shoot the people, kill the people. You know that's not God. Yeah. Why? Because God will not ask you to do so. Why? Because he's a good God. He, he, it is contrary to his character. It is contrary to scriptures. So you know that, isn't it? Yes. Aha. But he's a good God. He's a good God. He gives you things. I know people may not understand. No, sorry, right. we want to understand. My point is that God is a good God. He mm. gives you things, and the, what did that scripture say? That the blessings of God. They make it rich, and, add and they add no sorrow. So if God gives you something that is pleasing to you, mm -hmm. like that, Pastor. Mm. I don't know he can come and say, leave that thing or give it. God thing. said your time here is over. You see what I'm saying? It, you're at different levels. See, your time here, here's the point. Here's the point. Whatever God gives you, you must not love that thing more than you love God. You see what I'm saying? Your attachment to that thing must not be stronger than your attachment to God. This is how you know that you are mature. 
What can you walk away from just because you want to obey? It's very difficult because I don't know if you've been to the church. It's a massive church. 4,000 people. Huh? More than that? They have two services. I've preached there before. Massive church. They've just finished their building. You've been there, haven't you? You saw it. Really, really nice church. And I, I, I called him. I said, man of God, what's going on? <laughs> he just sent me a, he sent me a four page. I said, man of God, please read. <laughs> so I read the whole thing. Then when I read the whole thing, something ministered to me. I said, I, I admire you. For just for you to uh, for you to live this thing that God that you have built. Do you know how many men will be fighting with God? Will you say, I rebuke you? He said for two years he struggled with this. For two years he's been wrestling with this thing. And God said, Leave this thing. Here's my thing that I know God. That if he tells me to leave this thing. This thing way nice like this. This thing that is good like this. If it tells me to leave it, hey, <laughs> there's something better. There's something better ahead. Because God does not demote, he promotes. So the point here is the struggle. The struggle. That's what we're talking about. The struggle. And I'm saying that by the time you begin to learn to obey God, you're going to get to a place in your life where that will not be a struggle anymore because you know his voice. Samuel and Saul made the mistake thinking that when God said, kill all the Amalekites, the little he will get from the, uh, the Philistines, sorry, the little he will get from the Philistines is going to be better than what God will give him as a result of obedience. To obey is costly, but disobedience is costlier. To obey is costly, but disobedience is costlier. It will, it's more expensive to disobey. It's deadly. It's deadly. There are levels, you know, you got to understand there are levels. We want to mature in this church. We want to mature in this church. If God comes to you right now, say, take your car, not some raggedy old dilapidated God's forsaken ram shackled angel abandoned car. This nice car you just bought, brand spanking new car. The type? Uh, 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 Mercedes Benz, uh, uh, a Jaguar, a Tesla, uh, BMW 7 Series. Can I go on? I Infinity QX80. Is somebody talking to me? Fully loaded, fully paid for. You have the title, and God says to you, take this thing and go lay it at the apostles' feet. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You lying devil. Don't come. To Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a level of obedience. And your life is at the place of your obedience. Are we recording this thing? Your life is at the place of your obedience. That's where it is. So if you want to elevate your life, elevate your obedience. Where's Marsha and Lon? They're not here. Please tell them not to be missing. Marcia, oh, Marsha is here. Where, oh, Lon is working. Okay, Marsha is here. The first, second half is here, so that's good. He, hear this story. We were doing fundraising in church. We're going to do fundraising next year, so let me prepare your heart. Fundraising for our dome. We're going to start collecting for our dome. So prepare your heart. Are you hearing me? We're doing fundraising. 
I think for something, wanted to buy something for the church or something, doing fundraising. And, uh, oh, no, what were we doing for us? No, was it, my, was it, what was it? Apostle Samokwe. Samokwe, Samokwe. Apostle Samokwe. Begge. You all remember? <laughs> Begge. Okay. He was preaching and then he was collecting offering for the church. Okay. And he said, this offering, please, it must be a sacrificial offering. It has to mean something to you. It must hurt you. There are people who went and brought their jewelry from their house and sold it. Are you feeling me? Marsha alone, sorry I'm preaching your message here. I'm preaching, putting your business out there. But it's not everybody knows it, so hey. Marsha alone came to me after the service. They said, past, if not after the service, that's, during the service, they took their car key and threw it on the altar and said, that's their seed. <laughs> I called them in the office. I said, meet me in the office. Me, their pastor. Sometimes your pity will let you destroy people. Don't play God. I called them in my office and sat in my office and said, look, 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 look. We don't need your car. We really don't need your car. The church don't need this car. Can you please take it? They say, ah, pastor, how can we take the car? That is our seed. She dropped the car there and walked to walk. Walked to church. They were bumping rides all over the place. Bumping rides, bumping rides, bumping rides. Amen? Do you know that they have now started reaping the harvest? Can I tell your testimony? Can I tell your testimony? When they gave that offering, I told them, I said, Marsha, Lord, you have entered another level. What God will do for you what you can never do for yourself. Are you listening to me? Do you know as I'm talking to you right now? <laughs> That's the black. Look, you, you got to know the God you serve. Today now, somebody came, father, mother, brother, sister, somebody in your, in your, came and gave them a whole house. How much was the car? How much is the house? To, to, to make matters worse. Not worse, make matters better. Well, worse, whatever how you want to put it. We say we're going to Houston. Marsha started doing, fund, go fund me. Where pastor is, that's where I'm going. He goes into a hole, I will follow him into the hole. He goes into the hill, I will follow him to the hill. Cut long story short, they followed us to Houston. When they got to Houston, I told them, I say, you have stepped into another level. Was it a Chrysler you sold? Was it Sebring? PT Cruiser. The Lord gave them a Chrysler Sebring. In Houston, I told them, I said, you will see what God, God will make you a walking billboard. He will advertise his grace and his glory through you. We came back to Houston. They followed us back. Amen. To Las Vegas. We came back. Guess what? Lawn is walking. Lon is not just working some kind of job. He's working a good job. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. He was going to take his CDS license. He said, Pastor, pray for me. I said, I don't need prayer. You already got it. 
I said, your seed is in the ground. The harvest just began. Don't worry yourself. It's done. I came on Sunday. Op- he put his hand in his pocket. He said, Pastor, here is my CDA license. I said, you haven't said anything. <laughs> one after the other. One after the other. Are you understanding what I'm saying today? For somebody to come and give you a house, say, take. Here's the title. Take everything. It's yours. You think it's with their two eyes? God is behind it. Here's my point. Nobody told them to sow their car. It is between them and the God that they serve. And they heard what God said to them. It did not make any sense. How can you give your car and then you're walking? You, it's not that you have two cars. Oh. You don't have two cars. You have one car. The only one car you have, you go put it there. They were collecting offering in the Bible. Jesus stood back, stood back sat down, and was watching how they were collecting the offering. And he saw people giving out of their abundance. 5,000. 10,000, 1 million. Hey, I'm not saying don't give out of your abundance. Please give out of it because I need it in Jesus' name. So, we, we, we don't only collect the widow's might here. We collect other offerings here too. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Let me, let me put that out there. Amen. So, Jesus sat down there while they were collecting the offering. And he saw how people were giving from their abundance. And everybody was hailing them. And he saw this widow woman came. All she had was a little penny. Little penny. It looked small, but it meant the whole world to her. Your gift only means to God what it means to you. Your gift can never mean more to God than it means to you. If the gift does not mean anything to you, it does not mean anything to God. So the value of your gift is not in the hands of God. The value of your gift is in your own hands. You place value on that gift. Jesus said, this woman, though she gave little, she gave much. Why? Because others gave out of their abundance. She gave out of her lack. Her giving was sacrificial. The others, their giving was convenient. You will never know your level of commitment to God until you are brought to a place where it is no longer convenient to serve this God. Your service will now come from a place of sacrifice. That is when you know you have entered another level. Here in America, we serve God from convenience why you think our Bible study, look at our Bible study. Why, why you think that it, or, or your members are not here? Or what they are doing is more important than what you are doing? No. They are more busy than you? No. Why? It's not convenient for them. We have other things. Other things have taken priority over Bible study. Other things are more important. Things that does not even have eternal value. If I was not a church member, if I was not a pastor, and I'm serving my God, I do not think that there is something that will stop me from coming to church when those doors are opened. I don't think so. That's why even when I go to a city, I'm not invited, I'm not preaching, I'm on holiday. I will find a church. I can't stay, I, I, I can't. I can't. We went to Jamaica the other day, on a Sunday. <laughs> My wife looked at me, I looked at her. Find a church, please. Find a church. On a Wednesday. Wasn't on a Sunday. On a Wednesday. Let's go and attend church. Let's see how they, how they rock the gospel in this place. And we went and found a church somewhere. And we went and loved the Lord with them. I, I, I cannot understand sitting at home. Even if you are tired, push your way. You understand that your presence here does something to me as the pastor of this church. 
every time I come and I see you here, it does something to me. Now, if it does something to me, how much more to God? Who has the power to reward you? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, we don't want God to push us in a place where we will be running here because we have no choice, no hope. All our hope is here. We don't want that. So here's my point. There's a level of obedience that we want to get to. And you don't get there by trying. You get there by trusting. Did you hear me? You don't get there by trying. You get there by trusting. In Christ, we don't attain. We obtain. We don't attain. We obtain. Did you get something today? Were you blessed? Any question before we finally go? You got one? Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> she said, yeah, I got a question. Amen. Come on. Let's do it. Amen? Anybody else? If you have one, just come line up so we'll take it quickly and we'll go on. <laughs> she got to make sure it's the right day. Amen? Praise God. Did you all get, you, you got something today? Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll you want you want you can <laughs> yeah. you can hold it, you know. Don't try to cram it, just read it from the book. On Sunday you said my temptations are my downfall. I said what? Your temptations are your downfall. Your temptations are your downfall. Yes. Yeah. So I wrote it as my temptations are my downfall. I'm 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 struggling with that. They can, I mean, it, it can also be your promotion. Temptation has the propensity to lift you or put you down. Okay, it did. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so, so we got you straight, huh? Okay. Because when Satan came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn the stones to That was a temptation. But Jesus did not fall to the temptation. He did not yield to the temptation. So he was tested to be trusted. Amen? Go ahead, quickly. If you are... Um Is that better? Thank you. Sorry. If you're being faithful doing something that you feel God told you to do. Mm. It doesn't mean that and you're hurting and you cry. Did you fail? No, you didn't fail. If you're angry, did you fail? No, you didn't fail. Just keep doing what you're doing. Okay. You're still human. You're still flesh. But you see, you take that to God and God will, 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 will deal with that, that feeling. You're doing what God wants you to do. You're being faithful but it's hurting you. It's hurting you. That's what we're talking about. The sacrifice. It's an ouch. Yeah. The sacrifice. It's, 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 people think that every time obedience just, whoo. Oh, it's just, it's just, whoo. It's so good to obey God. Oh, everything just honky door. No, that's not the gospel. Sometimes to obey, it is the most difficult thing to do. But you see, every time you obey, you break a part of Satan off you. Every time you obey, you broke off a part of Satan and you imbibe a part of God in you. To obey is better than sacrifice. Are we done? Did you get something? Are you blessed? Amen. No, I love you though. You all know that? Amen. I know. I know. Sometimes I do. <laughs> just, just kidding. I know you love me. Come on, Pastor Larney. Take the offering and close us out. We're done. I'm done. Amen. Please, we apologize that the, the what do you call it, the parking lot, there's no light there. I don't know what they did. They're trying to put the air condition on the other side. So the